Welcome back to WRPLs, the podcast where we talk about all the things we are watching, reading, playing, and listening to. My name's Ben. And I'm Steve. How's it going, Steve? Doing well, Ben. Doing well. <laughs> this is going to be probably a very short episode. We don't have a whole lot. Once again, Steve, with a busy, busy life, can't get much done. It's fine. I'm going to start us off with a roll. Two. Well, you know what? That hit the wire. Do you really want to count that one? Uh, we've counted them before. That's true. I was trying to give you an out. Nah, it's fine. Two is fine. I'm going to say it's a three. Because we've been doing that. For X-23. And we're talking about X-Men. X-Men, that, yeah, is our main topic, who does not appear in this show at all. 18. <laughs> okay. Hey, we added a 20, so pretty good. So, yeah, as he, as he said, we're going to talk about X-Men 97. Uh, Steve just got done watching it. I've been done. You know, I watch it as soon as it's available. I'm like, 3.30 a.m. on a Tuesday night. Boom. I'm there. Uh, I only got one piece of news. That's not even really news. I just wanted to see if you heard it. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Mr. and Mrs. Smith season two got renewed, but no Donald Glover, no Maya Erskine. Weird. Well, I, I think I did see something about it, and it's, it's not confirmed that they're not in it. Uh, it's just not confirmed that they, that they are. are. Okay. Yeah, because the thing I saw season said, two is greenlit, but whether they're coming back is unclear at this okay. time. Uh, yeah, the thing I saw said it's coming back without them. It, it sounded definitive, but who knows? You know, clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's all I have for for news. Um, I mean, do you care if the season two doesn't have them? Will you? watch if season two doesn't have them probably not um just because the only reason i really watched the show anyway was for donald glover mm -hmm. um but if he returns will i watch season two probably i enjoyed season one enough um but yeah i don't think i would come back unless they got someone you tilted up towards you unless they got someone who i'm not thinking of and i'm just mm -hmm. like oh that'd be interesting to see or i really like that person but not I, really. I didn't know if it was something kind of maybe worked into it because i know there's a bunch of different spies so maybe season two would be like you're the new mr and mrs smith and you were on this other mission but didn't the last one end kind of on a cliffhanger and on a cliffhanger so you don't know what happened but i guess we'll see come no. season two all right uh, I only want to bring up one thing that I watched. I, I saw all the, the new releases. I, I mean, I didn't see If. Okay. Um, but you saw The Strangers and I you saw... saw uh, I saw the TV glow. The TV. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one was pretty good. One was absolute dog shit. I'll let you decide. <laughs> um, but do you remember... Do you care about spoilers for If? Are you going to see it? Uh, if I see it, it'll be on streaming services okay. like six months from now, probably. Do you remember Maybe. us talking about like what we think that movie is going to be about or like the big twist? Uh, no. Okay. Um, well, it turns out we were right. Um, Ryan Reynolds is just the imaginary friend of the girl the whole time. Oh. Yeah, and I'm and I'm not sure if I talked to you about it or if I that was something I just said to my roommate as we were watching the trailer for it or something. But yeah, an obvious thing that was completely obvious and uh, uh, apparently makes the movie kind of worse for that not being more upfront about mm -hmm. it. But whatever, I don't care. You weren't impressed, like a six <laughs> cents kind of thing. Yeah, no. like, oh, I didn't <laughs> oh. see that coming. They were like, "Oh, that's stupid." Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, let's see. Oh, but I did. Yeah, I did watch one thing that I just watched today. It's called Onyx the Fortuitous and the Talisman of Souls. Okay. Do you remember? Have you been playing D&D &D or something? <laughs> like? uh, there is a guy. His name is uh, Andrew Bowser. He is best known for playing this character uh, called Onyx the Fortuitous. And he would he did these little sketches where he'd like insert himself into uh, news articles. It'd be like this, this car ran into an Arby's and it's like a real news report, mm -hmm. but then he would cut as if he was the person on the scene that they were talking to. Gotcha. Okay. And his most famous one is like him at a comic con and like having inappropriate manga and just being a super weird neck beard, weeb dumb, not yeah, like a fedora, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, <clears throat> trench coat. Well, yeah, kind of a, that with uh, stockings on his hands. He has a, like a, a necktie, yeah, okay. but he's wearing a, a graphic tee. Do you know who I, I'm talking about? I don't. And but... he would like like talk about Satan and things like that and then go on this long rant. And then at the end of every one, he go, I don't know. That was like his little thing. He'd always spout these huge prophetic sort of sounding things and then just, I don't know. Uh, we should watch some of, some of his things. It's it's really funny because when I first saw it, I thought it was a legit dude. Like, God, this guy is pathetic. Um, well, he kickstarted a movie called Onyx the Fortuitous and the Talisman of Souls. He plays this character. He's a loser living at home. Works at a gross fast food place, and he just wants more with his life. And he's been obsessed with this uh, kind of Satanist character. And he enters a contest to, uh, you know, be a part of this awakening of a demon. And if they do it right, he'll get immortality. So he shows up with like he wins the contest with four other people, and. The, the the Satanist actually has other plans. He's going to sacrifice these five, and he'll get immortality. And it's a real goofy comedy. It, I, it feels like Beetlejuice, especially with like some of the practical effects. There's a lot of like ghouls and silly monsters that are not not CG, and uh, but mix it with Tenacious D. Okay, like somewhere in there. And I like both of those movies. And it, it's really funny. I really enjoy myself. If you don't like this character, you're going to hate it because, you know, he's the main guy. He's someone that I find really funny and really endearing, but I don't want to know him in real life. This is a coworker that you had that everybody says, don't talk to this guy or he'll rope you into a conversation and you'll be completely embarrassed just being around him uh, <laughs> but the character is so funny uh it's on tubi it, it was like a screen box exclusive it, it was it had a theatrical release of one show in one theater in canada uh, so it's it's really relatively low budget but for Just how trying to qualify for the oscar right? <laughs> absolutely but for being low budget it still looks really good and it's got a lot of random people that you may have seen before um you saw School of Rock. I did. You remember the one that plays the bass? Yeah. She's in it. She's one of the, the main oh. people. Uh, the You saw Final Destination 2? Yeah, that's the one on the highway, right? Yes. Yeah. There's a black guy with a real deep voice who's the original voice of the original Kratos. He's in it. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, some, <laughs> someone from... Deep Pool. <laughs> Every time I see that guy, I just like... That's fucking Kratos, That's man. Kratos. Uh, a, a woman from Mad TV. I don't know her name, but if you saw her, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I know who Mad that TV. is. Um, yeah, it's just a, a lot of fucking fun. I, I had a great time watching it. I want to go one more time. Onyx the Fortuitous and the Talisman of Souls. Uh, I had trouble searching for it on Tubi. I put in Onyx, mm -hmm. nothing. The Fortuitous, nothing. Like, okay talisman and then it popped up I'm like okay what the fuck you would think onyx would be enough to to trigger yeah, that i can't imagine there's a ton of onyx yeah movies uh-huh there. but there was a couple of like talisman movies so i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know right. maybe maybe in its search it is called talisman of souls and they cut off the the first part who knows but it's it's a good watch it is a little long but it doesn't feel long it's like an hour and 50 and most comedy should be 90 you know uh but everything, there's no real part in that, I would say, cut out. But it's a it's a good fucking time, and I recommend it. Especially if you like Beetlejuice, if you like, I was going to say School Rock. Um, Tenacious D. Tenacious D. This will be right up your alley. Well, I like both of those things, so maybe I'll uh, watch a trailer or a clip or something. Yeah, yeah, I'd at least watch a trailer. But we're going to watch at least one of his videos at the at the end of this. Uh, Alrighty. Good, good stuff. All right, let's get to our main topic, X-Men 97. Man, 10 minutes into the episode and we're already at a main topic. New new record. Look at us. Uh, so you didn't watch the original show. Uh, I dabbled in the original. I was on when I, I think the the show premiered in 97 or premiered in no, 94? It, no, it was like, yeah, 94. And then 94. it ended in, no, 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 it may be 93 and then ended in uh, 96. Hold on, I got it right here. Uh, 92 to 97. Okay. So when it premiered, I was two years old. Uh, so growing up 
I caught uh, maybe random episodes mm-hmm. or certain bits, just channel surfing and putting stuff on. Uh, I was more the first, I think, uh, like superhero show other than that. Well, it was like Batman, the animated series and uh, the Spider-Man show was mm-hmm. when I like started getting into superhero cartoons. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Outside of Ninja Turtles, which was like definitely more for kids. Like the, sure. I, the Spider-Man and Batman were my first foray into like more adult mm-hmm. uh, animation kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. This is the thing that got me into comic books, into superheroes in general. Uh, I don't know what I knew before, but I remember being excited seeing that this show was coming on. Mm-hmm. So I must have had some sort of passing knowledge of it in some way. Uh, and then obviously I just fell in love instantly. It had, you know, it, 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 it was the show that made me like love Gambit and Rogue. My buddy was a big Wolverine guy. So like the three main coolest guys in that show. Uh, and then made me start collecting comics and I collected comics till about maybe like 98. And I just, just stopped. There was an X-Men comic that was really stupid or like they just got done with some big arc Mm -hmm. and then like aliens appeared in the danger room and they're like, X-Men help me. And I just kind of rolled my eyes and went, I don't think I care anymore. And the X-Men wasn't the only thing I read. I I read like darkness and Witchblade and all these image and top cow stuff. Uh, And it just kind of turned me off of comics uh, in general. I continued with the other (laughs) stuff longer because they were more, more adult themed had, you know, sexier drawn ladies. So that, that kept me hooked. But I dropped X Men. Yeah, I don't know what it is about aliens. It's like I can live in a fantasy world. I can live in a, you know, science fiction world where everyone has powers. But like once aliens show up, it's like, do I care about fan- yeah. aliens? Like it was the same thing when I read uh, Dark Knights of Steel. Um, Dark Knights of Steel. That was like the, uh, what if the Just League were in like medieval times? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, that's it's a really fun, interesting uh, story that I was really, really into. And the final like two issues are just. Uh, aliens are coming to Earth and they're going to take over. It's like, how do I God care about an alien, like, Earth take uh, plot? Mm-hmm. Whatever. Um, so I was a little disappointed in the ending. But anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, so this show, you know, created my, my love of the X-Men, uh, played the arcade game, one of, one of the best side-scrolling beat-em-ups, which I'm surprised they have not tried to remake that in any sort of way. Every X-Men video game that has come out has been relatively crappy, except mm. for the fighting games. Those those were always fun. Um, but that was also another surprise. It's just X-Men Children of the Atom from Capcom. I was a big Capcom guy because I love Mega Man, and I was a, a fan of Street Fighter. And then I walk into the arcade, and there's a fucking X-Men one, and I could play as Iceman or Wolverine or Psylocke. Like, why is Psylocke in this? And then Marvel vs. Capcom and all that. And then just Did you ever play that uh, Wolverine game for, I think it was a GameCube, where it was like actually violent? And I remember, oh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. And it's, I remember people were actually said it was pretty good. It's great. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, I don't know if it was GameCube. I know it was PS3, at, at least. Okay. Um, one of the only games probably that are better than the movie that it's based off of, because it does X-Men Origins Wolverine stuff, but it adds sentinels and so much more but yeah you got you got beat up and chunks of you were falling off and you would slowly heal and your clothes would rip it was it was gnarly it was a really fun game a little a little buggy at times but i had a great time speaking of wolverine did you see the little bit of footage that has been released for insomnia's uh, I, I, i did and from what i saw i was impressed but at the same time i was like i'm Tempering, this could be early. You might get a stay. You got the bad mic, so you got to stay. It might be nothing like this. So it's like when I it was when I was announced they were doing it. I was excited because the yeah. Insomnia Spider Man games are some of my favorite games yep. ever. Uh, but I am not going to judge a game that has just had some leaked footage out. I of just Wolverine walking around yeah. and climbing some buildings. I didn't see any action. Oh, there's an action. There's an action. Oh, okay, That's pretty sweet. Okay, uh, but like I said, I. I have no real opinion on it because I'm going to wait yeah. till I see like the actual stuff. Yeah, because I, I really want to know what the traversal is because <laughs> seeing him climb up buildings is fine. But if I had to do that all the time, it, it was a little slow paced. Mm. And when you have the, 
the fast paced swinging of Spider-Man. Then you just grind to a halt with Wolverine. I, like, does he get on a motorcycle? Is it completely open world? Maybe it's just like open sections that you have to kind of, and it's a little more linear. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, my guess would be more last of us that is like sure straight or, line or like slightly open world where you can kind of do some exploring yeah, it's a big world but there's a but way be to like, go oh i'm in texas today oh and but there's a mission in nevada or whatever that is like it is fast travel is just you call a night crawler on the phone sure like, yeah hey logan poof, poof, and then that's your fast travel and, and for all we know this is He's not even an X-Men yet in that game. It could be pre-X-Men stuff. Yeah, we don't know a thing. No idea. Okay, so this show, when it when they first announced it, I kind of rolled my eyes. I didn't want them to come back to this. It just felt like Disney's green lighting anything as a cash grab. Oh, we own Fox now? Let's do it all. But gl- I'm so glad I was, uh, uh, I was wrong because this was – kind of the perfect thing for them to do to get everybody hyped for the X-Men in live action. Mm -hmm. It's still going to be a few years. We don't really know any sort of casting directions they're taking it. I mean, still, we're still kind of in limbo of what the Marvel Cinematic Universe is after, I mean, we've been uh, like, what is it, five years post-Infinity War, and we still don't really know what we're doing in this, and how are they going to integrate the X-Men, and does anybody even care? And the fact that they, they handled this with such love and care that it just got everybody excited again. Everybody kind of had written off X-Men after things like X3, X-Men Apocalypse, and all the garbage X-Men movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think people were just kind of over it. And they kind of became the Wolverine show. Um, but I think uh, if, if Disney said, we're kind of done. No more Spider-Man. No more... Um, Avengers, none of that. We're just going to say it's done. Yeah, yeah, just hit the brakes and just focused on X-Men, even not connecting them to the cinematic universe. I think people would be OK. Like, if you could give us this quality in live action, do whatever the hell you want, because I think people are just kind of kind of over it. I'll always give the MCU a chance because they have produced so many good things. Yeah, they had but, a good run. Yeah, but I'm just very, very excited to see where the hell they go with this, because this was fucking sweet. So many weeks back, when the show first premiered, uh, we we talked about the first episode because mm-hmm. um, that was all that was out at the time. And I said I didn't really care for the first yeah, episode. That it, it was corny. <laughs> yeah, it didn't do much of anything for me. You know, like I said earlier, I, it's not something I was raised on, but it was a show I remember watching bits and pieces of. Because you watch X Men Evolution, right? Yeah, Evolution was more my time, yeah. which I, I definitely remember watching that show. And I and I don't uh, think anybody I've never heard of anybody talk about Wolverine and the X Men. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's the third show that I hear is pretty good, but nobody ever talks about that one. Anywho, I don't yeah. remember that one at all. Yeah, uh, that's another like Professor X dies, puts Wolverine in charge, mm-hmm. and it, it's more of well, the movies are popular. And Wolverine's popular, so we gotta. If we're doing another X Men show, Wolverine's got to be the main guy. Good. Well, after the first movie, but isn't that when Evolution came out? It, or the second? It one? was. Uh, Evolution was around that same time, okay. but the X Men had been around for so long. Oh, and right, then right. once Evolution was canceled, and they wanted to do a new one, they knew. Well, Wolverine is X Men, oh, so okay, right, right, we right, have to do okay. this. Yeah. Uh. So anyway, I just thought. I got that it was just trying to capture the whatever the the magic I let's mm-hmm. say of the original series was, but it's slightly cleaner animation and uh, it has a very fun action sequence with Scott like using his laser beams to like back himself up, yep. and I was like, oh, that's a fun way mm-hmm. to do that because I think uh, I think we can all agree that the action sequences of the original aren't particularly that good. No, they're not very uh, dynamic. Because and, and even in the movies, Cyclops doesn't do anything all that I'm not cool. just talking about Cyclops. I'm just talking about just in general. In, in general, yeah. Just because it's, uh, even though it had like very adult themes and messages, it was still like four kids. So you yeah. didn't have Wolverine like stab anybody with yeah. his claws. Or... A, lot, a lot of robots and slicing panels and, you know, yeah. electric tentacles coming out. It was out. the same thing with Ninja Turtles. You know, they yeah. always, like the Foot Clan was robots because you, you have a guy with swords stabbing them. They can't <laughs> yeah. be human. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, watching the first episode, I just thought it was, it was fine. It was kind of cheesy, but if X-Men is your thing, great. Uh, 
But I was like, well, let me watch episode two. And then I thought episode two was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, there's something here. And then as the series went on, there were some episodes I liked, some episodes I didn't care for all that much. Mm -hmm. like, this is just fine. Uh, and then we just get to episode five. And I was skipping ahead. <laughs> yeah. And then after episode five, I was like, this is one of the best fucking things I've seen yeah. this year. It almost feels like even not only storytelling is better, but animation, too. They really went, oh, you like you like anime here? Yeah, we're going to do X-Men with anime. Ignore X Men that X Men yeah. the anime that was made years ago that that's garbage. We're gonna we're gonna do it uh, again and do it proper. Yeah, I think now that we've seen, you know, anime got popular in America in the early two thousands with like Dragon Ball Z mm -hmm. and Gundam and all that stuff. Now all those people I think that grew up on that. They or, work in the industry. They work in the industry now. <laughs> yeah. So all these people, it took a while for American animation to, like, <clears throat> we, I think we always had solid storylines and mm -hmm. like, decent looking animation, but we never could capture like action sequences like uh, yeah. anime can. But now since we all, since all those people grew up on it, now they're like, oh, we can match them not oh, only yeah. in storytelling and looks, but now we can do like really dope action sequences too. Absolutely. So it's exciting for anim animation we're going to see and. You know, not to bring everything back to Lord of the Rings, but I'm I'm looking forward to the War of Rohirrim trailer just to see what that looks like. Yeah, I, I'm really hoping that's not CG. I'm hoping it's a, a unique style because you've seen the AI live action Simpsons or AI. What if Lord of the Rings was <clears throat> Wes Anderson? Or, yeah. Or what, what, what if it was Wes Anderson? What if it was Lord of, uh, Lord of the Rings was anime? And they always look so fucking cool. Mm -hmm. So I hope we're not trying to do lifelike, realistic CG Lord of the Rings. Let's give it a specific style. Even if it's fucking Ghibli and it's that simple sort of anime style, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I just don't want... I just don't want... You just don't want it to look like Shrek. I, you know, I don't want it to look Shrek and I don't want it to look like Spider-Verse and I, I, I don't want them to do... Well, Gollum was a, a feat... And was so realistic. Let's try to do everybody realistic. Well, we can't get a Vigo Morgenstern back. Uh, <laughs> he has to be younger. So let's just do hyper realistic D age Vigo. And it's like, I don't want that. Let's, let's get some style. Kind of like, you know, the new Puss in Boots. Yeah. It kind of looks like Shrek in the old Puss in Boots, but they, they changed it up a, a bit. Uh, yeah. But by looks, every action scene is so cool. Even like in that last episode, you take someone as, relatively lame as Jubilee and give her just two seconds of spinning around and face palm and bastion with some fireworks and it looks cool as shit. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see what, what's, what's some of the pros and cons. Do you have any cons off the back that you just want to like rip into it for? I mean, I appreciate that they kind of, I, I think Jubilee's always had a cool look to her. I and love I, her look. I, her jacket's so cool. Her jacket's the cool. The pink and yellow the, is great. She's got the, she's got the sunglasses. Mm -hmm. I think she's uh, a fun character. But in terms of powers, it's like, I never really gave a fuck about Jubilee yeah. or like why she was on the team and going on missions because it never felt like she could do all that much other than like, here's a distraction <clears throat> Yeah, like the other guys, yeah. you know, fight. Um, so I appreciate that they gave her more to do mm -hmm. uh, in this series. And, uh, and like, she was the 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 POV character of learning who mutants are and who the yeah. X-Men are. And that's so the audience can learn too. And now she gets to kind of mentor Roberto. Now that she's been doing it for a bit, we got to do the same thing for the audience who may not have seen the original series. Let's get this Roberto character in. And now she gets to be the mentor. Yeah. Um, however, I wasn't in love with the uh, Mojo episode. Yeah. Uh, like I, I love an episode that can kind of like diverge and be a fun, different thing. So mm -hmm. I respect it for that. Uh, but to me, it always just feels like X Men always took itself seriously because mm -hmm. it was, it was a superhero comic that like had things to say and had important messages. And then here's just like, oh, we're getting sucked into a video game Jumanji style episode. Yeah. And it's like, uh, I mean, and it, and it works in terms of like who Mojo is and why mm -hmm. you would do this kind of thing. Yeah. And, and I get it. Um, but it just, I feel like it distracts from the main storyline that I'm now like invested in. Because yeah. if you look at the X-Men movies, they're all very serious. 
uh, not, but I mean, they have jokes because it's a family who like cracked mm-hmm. jokes on each other and gave each other a hard time, like Scott and Wolverine. Mm-hmm. But then just here's this episode in the middle of like, oh, uh, mutant genocide. And it's like, oh, well, now we're playing a video game. And I just, uh, it, I appreciate it, but I didn't, it didn't do anything for me. Yeah. You know, it, Mojo definitely feels like a, a character Deadpool would go up against. Yeah. You know, Deadpool second to a video game makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, so I, I get it, but I, all the little Easter eggs in that and the animation switches to, to go to that kind of 16 bit look, all the X-Men arcade game references. I, I, I was perfectly fine with it. My mm-hmm. problem with that episode is it's half that and then half storm and um, forge forge. Thank you. You know, in Australia or, or wherever fighting the nemesis and her regaining her power. I think there's a lot of good things said in Storm's story mm-hmm. for this. I just felt like it it was a complete sidetrack to get Storm back to exactly where she was right. in the first place. And it's like, oh, now Forge is here. Cool. He could help Beast with things. It's like Beast would always have to invent all the things. Well, now he's got a lab partner who's even better. Yeah, I feel like the one of the weaknesses to X-Men is they're never, other than Wolverine, they're never really strong solo or at least that i've seen they've been super strong solo because this that's not like the storm stuff i kind of checked out mentally because i didn't care about her fighting some de- i don't even know what it is yeah and i her subconscious in, yeah in and then Demon the Born. uh the episode i liked the least was definitely the charles and space becoming emperor yeah. like, i didn't track any of the, I, my brain checked out i don't remember what happens in and it. that's like i know there's like a intergalactic war with another race that uh, they were trying to do peace negotiations for. And I was like, I don't, does this play into later? Cause yeah. as far as I can tell it doesn't, it just explains no. like why Charles was away and then decides to come, come back. back. Yeah. And maybe those characters will come back in a future thing and they'll invade earth. And Charles, yeah. like, we used to be lovers or something, but like, I don't remember anyone's name or how they <laughs> uh, connect to X-Men canon. X-Men's more your thing. Batman's yeah. my thing. But I checked out of that entire fucking episode. Yeah, and especially coming at after episode five, it was a real, you know, pull in the emergency break. Because I never liked the Shi'ar Empire. I don't mm-hmm. really love the space stuff in general when it comes to X-Men. Um, and it, Because it's always Shi'ar Empire and Phoenix. And they're like my two least favorite things. I'm so sick of the Phoenix. And she even shows up in this final episode just as one of those. I got it in my back pocket. If I mm-hmm. need to pull out the Phoenix, I'll, I'll fucking do it. But uh, yeah, I agree. That episode is not very good. Um, it was kind of fun seeing uh, Charles and Lalandra be like so kind of horny with each other. Just mm-hmm. like, oh, she treats me like one of your, like I'm a dog. And like, oh, if you want to get collared, we could do that later. And like, Jesus Christ. I don't, <laughs> I don't like thinking of Professor X getting it on. Um, but yeah, I've never liked those in the comics. So I didn't love that episode either. And it, it doesn't tie in really to this series. He could have just been like in a bunker doing secret Professor X stuff and, and came back and that would have been fine. But since it was in the, the previous seasons, it works. You know, it's still paying homage to all that. So it's fine. But it is the one you could absolutely skip. Yeah. Um, and, like, I know, so this new reboot, we'll call it, uh, is trying to retcon some stuff, I imagine. It's like, okay, well, if Professor X died at the end of the original series and we want to use him, well, we got, need a reason to bring him back. Yeah. And, because, I mean, I'm not super familiar with the original mm-hmm. series, but it just seems like this whole show was, once again, and it's classic and superhero stuff, so I get it, but no one can just fucking die. Yeah. They all have to, like, come back, or they get Wolverine claws through the chest, but now they have to have an <laughs> existential crisis in the mind, Yeah, they're not really that hurt, or whatever, which is just fucking absurd, uh, that Wolverine can't kill anybody. Um, and then the only character that does die in this is the one character who like I was shocked to see die yeah. because of how popular this character is. But then it, it just makes me think, well, season two, they're coming back. Yeah. I mean, with that post credit just... scene of apocalypse saying, you know, all this trauma, all this death, and he's holding one of Gambit's cards. Yeah. Well, Gambit was 
one of his horsemen at one time. He was death. So uh, he's going to re- resurrect there him. You go. Yeah. So, I mean, Wolverine's been death and Angel was death. Like, everyone's been fucking death at some point. Everyone's been a horseman. So, yeah, the, he's. I knew he was going to come back in some way. Seeing Cable and knowing, like, Bishop does time travel stuff, they're going to fix it somehow. I really thought they were going to try to, like, go back and stop Genosha being blown up from ever happening. Mm-hmm. I thought that was going to be the whole point. Nope. And so all those people like I that. I think they do say, I think he said, I tried stopping Genosha. Mm-hmm, like 2,000 times and, yeah, and, and couldn't, ne- couldn't just, do it. It's always going to happen. Um, and like, oh, here's Madeline Pryor. We have another Jean Grey. Isn't that going to be interesting? What kind of stories are we going to... Oh, don't worry. She's dead. Oh, here's Leech. You remember Leech and the Morlocks from before? Oh, don't worry. They're dead too. How Magneto survived, I'm, I'm not sure. You know, how Bastion got in there and saved him from, from death, but who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, shit, where was I going with that? Um, but oh yeah, uh, for with Gambit dying, it's shocking because he is such a popular character. But if you really look at the team, he probably is the most expendable. Sure, he's I mean, cool. He's good in a fight, but he really isn't a major focus of a lot of stories. The one with when um, Bishop comes back in time to kill Gambit because he thinks Gambit's going to kill Senator Kelly, but it's actually Mystique. You know, that was like a, a big story. But most of the time, it's just ah, that's, but I mean, as that's like Rogue and Gambit. Rogue Morph and Gambit. And Sunspot and Jubilee. Sure, but Morph has like already major... died. Sunspot was never in the original team. Jubilee's too young. You can't kill Wolverine. Jean and, and Scott are the two main people. And Jean's died. And, and Jean has died so before. Okay. So the only other one, like, you probably don't want to do that to Storm either, would be Beast or Gambit. Mm. And although I think people love Beast, they're not as emotionally tied to him because yeah. he's just like the, Eureka, I figured out a way to solve our problems. Yeah, Gambit's got charisma and charm. And, and then the relationship with Rogue. He's got to lose. Yeah. 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 And uh, one of my favorite parts when... <laughs> like poor rogue she breaks up with him and then is touted in front of everybody as like the new queen of genosha is going to be with with magneto but then she tells magneto no she wants to be with gambit and doesn't get a chance to like tell gambit before he dies mm-hmm. so he didn't get to see that but he knew she liked her was after she broke up with him or like w- whenever they had a conversation gambit always called rogue like my sherry or share mm-hmm. which is just my love and then she breaks up with him and he's like all right have a good one mona me which means friend mm-hmm. and like, oh he's like never called her that before and i felt like that was such a a little dig like yeah you're no longer my love you're just my pal um but yeah i shocked he was dead he when he died that whole him driving the motorcycle up <laughs> and and flinging it at the what was it called the a super sentinel. Some, yeah, super the, sentinel. yeah, some mega sentinel. Um, it was just so fucking cool. Yeah. Great sound design in that whole sequence. Yeah. Uh, great terrifying action and score. Like, just what a fucking perfect episode. Yeah. Like, just filled with emotional hits mm-hmm. and lots like, of cameos in it. And cameo. Like, Everyone dancing around to that one song. That was that was pretty <laughs> funny. Uh, you know, first appearance of Nightcrawler this season. Yeah. And uh, I would just like to shout out that Nightcrawler is my favorite X-Men character. And this whole season has just been like, yeah, it, it stays true. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know something about like, I'm not a religious person, but I love religious characters. Uh, just because I feel like when they're put in, they're either like, you know, often used as like the villain of a storyline. Mm-hmm. But it's just like. No one gives him shit for it, and he's just like, this yeah. is just my faith, and I yep. love you guys for whatever, and I look like a demon, but I worship God, mm-hmm. and I just think that's really cool. And also, his fucking powers are badass, yeah. and he wields three swords, and he uses a tail with it, and just him oh, his, him fighting those human sentinels was yeah. a great fucking action sequence, and like just, oh, duh, Gambit's uh, eulogy was fucking making me yeah. almost tear up. It's just good, good stuff. I fucking love my crew. Mm-hmm. Uh... Let's talk about the intro. Okay. Obviously, one of the greatest intro songs that's ever been. No one skips it. It's great. It just gets you pumped. Uh, the it's thing an I, intro that doesn't have any words either. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's in like Batman the Animated Series, but that's like a little somber. It's I, I would skip the, the Batman intro plenty of times. Yeah. I, I think 
a lot of people wouldn't be able to recite the Batman intro. They think they might do the uh like that's sure, more famous yeah. than the Batman animated series yeah. intro. Uh but X-Men everyone Batman. everyone can sing you the Fresh Prince of Bel Air song sure. it's it's very catchy and has words you can sing yeah. along to. But X-Men, they just know <laughs> it just it always hits. Yeah. Uh the I love that the intro wasn't always the same. Once Gambit died, Nightcrawler took his place in mm-hmm. the intro. Like Professor X is in the first one, and then once he's gone, it's Magneto. And then like there's little uh, little scenes that change. Mm-hmm. Not every time, but most of the time. Rick and Morty style. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, but not season to season. But episode, not season to season, yeah. Like in the first one, there was like Jubilee running up and getting like trapped behind a, a fence. Now it's Roberto. Um and then I don't know if you you probably didn't notice this after Bashin uh, turns on all of his Sentinel people, mm-hmm. you know, at the very end where it's like it shows the villains running and then the mm-hmm. heroes running. And r- right at the beginning, there's people running in the middle away from like a, a giant Sentinel in the background. All those people, if you pause it and you look at them, they all turn into robot sentinels in episodes. You can piece them all out. And then in the following episode, when they're running towards screens, they're the robot versions of themselves. Mm. It's like a two second thing. And they still figured like, no, let's put it in. Let's update it. So fucking cool. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad you're really into the (laughs) intro to the show. Uh, I want to talk about costumes. It was nice that everybody got to do alternate versions, mm-hmm. getting to see Wolverine in his brown and gold. Uh, but in that, that that final episode, everyone's did, wearing their worst costumes except Wolverine. They did Jean fucking dirty. I hate that Miss Marvel costume. Jesus Christ. It looks bad. I don't like Scott's hair not showing. Mm-hmm. I think that looks bad. I don't bad. think that looks terrible, though. It's I, fine, but... I, I think I, he's, of all the characters, stayed the most consistent. And, like, I liked all of his mm-hmm. looks. Um, Jubilee had like her black outfit, which is like not an old costume for her. That was a more of a modern one. So you like Storm's white versus black outfit? I I like the black outfit. I don't like the stomach showing. Sure, it's yeah. too it's too sexy. I like her all white outfit mm-hmm. from the beginning. And then Rogues is fine as well. It's her her villain costume, but it's not as good as her classic. She has like. Yeah. My favorite costume. It's, she just like found a tracksuit at uh, the Gap, mm-hmm. and, and then the outfit. threw a jacket on it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just mean her, oh, her, the, the, the other one. The other one, yeah. Well, it, it's the yeah, it's got one. the weird. It's just got a hoodie. Yeah, not a big fan. But I love that she went to Magneto's side. Makes sense. One, it's her former lover, and her current lover was killed. And fuck humans. Yeah, if, if anyone uh, should be upset or and go to his side. She makes the most sense. And Sunspot, it's a little earned with his mom turning him over. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I kind of wish there was a third, a surprise one. But there really isn't anybody else who is that extreme. And maybe they didn't just because no one would really buy it. But even if it was Nightcrawler going to his side just to be by his sister. But really, it was just like, I'm going to go spy for for you guys. Yeah, yeah. I'll try and talk her down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. that might have been a nice twist. It's like, sure. no, I don't want Nightcrawler to go to the bad side. Yeah. Like, this whole thing is like, I look bad, but I'm good. Yeah. But it's like, they don't have enough time because they have to do like a whole season's worth of story in an episode because they just fly. The pacing of this is so fast. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it truly suffers, but it would have been nice if you could have slowed down for some of it because it just barrels to the end and like we have to get, get this wrapped up because we have another thing coming that we also have to get wrapped up as quick as possible um the the thing i love about the show also is in my time of watching x-men and reading comics they could have easily jumped ahead and done some more modern stories like Krakoa and things like that but they decided no this is, takes place in 97 let's do the stories that were out in comics during this time. So having Wolverine get his adamantium ripped out, having Bastion around, um, and having Professor X go into Magneto's mind. Now, in the comics, Professor X turns him into a vegetable. Magneto becomes brain dead. And that uh, creates Onslaught. So it's like this evil manifestation of Magneto inside Professor X that turns Mm -hmm. into this this big thing. Um, So could... Professor X move metal? 
uh, he was like kind of trapped within this construct of a bad guy. It's 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 a, a big concept that I don't think makes a whole lot of sense. It's like his Magneto's uh, his mind manifested real, so he was a physical thing, and Professor Professor X was like kind of trapped inside the armor of it. Okay. Yeah. It's it's All not right. it's not the greatest Whatever, thing. <laughs> but it was one of the like big things that I read at the time. Like he he was able to punch Juggernaut across the country and you know he was this, this powerful looming threat and everybody's like who what is onslaught? Who is onslaught? And it was a big reveal. Oh my god, it's Professor X. Oh my god, it's actually Magneto in Professor X's mind. Um and then that led to Heroes Reborn where they broke open his shell. It's the psychic energy. Franklin Richards, uh, you know, Mr. Fantastic's son. He's yep. a he could alter reality. He created a whole other world where all the non mutant heroes could go in to kind of like suck up all this psychic energy, and then they were plopped onto a an alternate timeline, just so Marvel could restart all those stories, so they can tell the Captain America, Fantastic Four, Iron Man, and Hulk stories again for newer readers, updating them, uh, which I also read, but then yeah, that didn't last long either. Comics are stupid, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like uh, a girl you started dating, and you're just like really passionate about this thing, and you want to tell her about it, and now I'm just like... <laughs> I, why am I dating this guy? Yeah. This is so... Yeah, it, like, when you explain comics, comics are better read issue to issue. Yeah. When, you, when you're telling, oh, this took place over five years, it's all dumb. Because everybody's died and come back and has been a clone or altered in dimension. It's it's all ridiculous and stupid. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it how, uh, you know, Bishop and Cable and... You know, time travel has always played a big part in all comic book stories, but mm-hmm. that's another thing I, I'm not super pumped about is the use of, you know, time travel, no dimensions. So like, some, I think I kind of want to break from all that because I feel like yeah. it's always the go to. And it's like, we, you know, oh, this movie's really awesome because we're taking all these big risks, but really mm-hmm. they don't really matter mm-hmm. because once you introduce time travel, it's like, well, I know how this is going to turn out. Then. Yeah. Uh, so it's just like, I wish things could just be. And then maybe like two seasons down the line, we're like, okay, when we're gonna write content stuff or something. Sure. It's just like we're we did all, all this really cool stuff, but now time travel. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, I want to go back to costumes real quick. Uh, there was a line that was just great of Cyclops giving Cable an outfit. He's like, oh, what am I doing? Joining the circus? I'm like, what do you expect? Black leather, and it's a nice fuck you back to Brian Singer putting the original X-Men in black leather and, and given the line of, Oh, what do you expect? Yellow spandex to like, yeah, we do. Cause it's an X-Men movie and this is their costumes. This is what they look like. And you're trying to make them these like paramilitary uh, characters. It's, I, I hate the look of those X-Men original X-Men movies. I get it. But I think at the time I get it. And like why you would like, if you look at comic book outfits, they don't. A lot of them don't translate well. Sure. And I think yes, you could do it in a way where you can like still make them blue and hints of yellow and like make them look modern and more military style or whatever. I guess. Um, so it's like you're you're doing the best of both worlds. But like, I don't get upset about him making them in black outfits because like at least it like made them, uh, you know. <sighs> Yeah, it, it, it makes them, them a like, team. It, it, it give them a it, uniform. It that like kid idea, because if they were just in bright yellow and blue, you'd be like, oh, well, this is a. Yeah. They're in kids' costumes, like doing superhero stuff. Come on. And they don't need to be, but even in the comics, they have had uniform costumes where it is just kind of mostly dark blue with a big yellow X, kind of like mm-hmm. in um, Phoenix, uh, Dark Phoenix, sure. that movie. That's really simple. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like I think, they, and that's they all got they there. should have done. But they're they like there. But they, I understood why they started here. No, it, like, it was. We're not sure if this is gonna work. And now that you built the franchise fans over 20 years, it's like okay, well now we can do the blue and yellow. Yeah, I don't think they. They, they may have been able to pull it off from the get go, but maybe it wouldn't. Have but been imagine if they they did it with Spider Man. That's a stupid fucking costume. And they're like, no, no one's gonna believe that. That's gonna look ridiculous in live action. Let's change it 100% completely and make it cool. Because the Matrix is cool, so let's make I don't, this cool. The difference there is, like, yes, I agree that someone who made a spider outfit said, I'm going to make it 
red and blue is a silly idea mm-hmm. in general. But I don't think anyone's ever said Spider-Man's got a bad looking costume. No, I know, but it's <laughs> like but you, yeah. but you look at the X-Men, you go, though like Cyclops' costume is really fucking cool. You look at Superman, his costume is cool. And then when you translate it into live action, it can look silly. But you got to work with that original blueprint. Mm-hmm. And I think Spider-Man did it well. They could have done it with X-Men. We saw an X-Men apocalypse. Everybody kind of had what their costume should look like. And even, if, like I said, just the simple, you know, even if it was black with the yellow X on the front, that would have been fine. But it was just 100% black. X-Men 3 does a little bit more. They got like little pipings around, like mm-hmm. like Wolverine has yellow piping. Iceman has blue piping. It's just very, very faint. And like at least that's even something. But just completely black was awful. And so I really love this line. That was a long conversation about costumes. I just want to point out, what, so, like, are you happy with, like, I assume you'd be happy with the Hawkeye change, because Hawkeye's original costume is utterly stupid looking. Yeah, I mean, it's just the mask. In, it, you take sure. the mask off, and I don't mind him having, like, shoulder pads and pouches and stuff. That's fine. Okay, fair enough. It, it's it's usually masks that do kind of ruin things. Like, we've never seen Wolverine in a mask. I know we're going to see it coming soon. Uh, it's it, It's just... Some don't work. Yeah. But a lot of X-Men don't wear masks. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, that's kind of part of the whole thing is you don't hide your face because you're not you're not hiding your identity. You want people to know who you are because mutant and proud and blah, blah, blah. Where Spider-Man is different. I'm a kid and I'm, I'm working alone and I don't want my elderly aunt to be murdered on my behalf. Fair enough. Moving on. Uh, let's talk about cameos. Cameos. God, I, I, I love that Morph is in this just so he can just turn into whoever they want. Oh, you miss Colossus? Here he is, looking cool, taking hits. I love that use of, uh, cameos. Uh, and it's good to know that this world, like, they're not shying away from the idea that, oh yeah, like, the Avengers live in this world, Spider-Man lives in this world, like, Yes, they exist. We don't ever talk about them, mm-hmm. except they run into Captain America at one yeah. point. Uh, but I also, like, I could have done without them. No. Nah. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> seeing, it's one of those, it's like seeing Doctor Strange perform surgery with magic or seeing uh, Daredevil take down a guy. She's like, ah, like I said, that's cool that we now know that they exist. Mm-hmm. But does the show necessarily lose anything if you cut them out? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I, world building? Sure, but how, I think, it to me it just felt like, check it out, as opposed to like, sure. what is this? But it doesn't linger. If, if... No, no, I, I mean, by no means am I saying I dislike it. I'm just saying I could do without that. I think the use of cameos for Morph is awesome. Like him being able to, like you said, transform into the Hulk or Mr. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Like that's all very fun because that's also, as it's doing world building without going like, eh? And eh? mm-hmm. like, there's a functional reason why these cameos are here mm-hmm. versus just like, check it out. Spider-Man's thing swinging through the city. Yeah. Am I right? But once again, like I said, <laughs> I don't hate it. It's just those can I, I, Morph's cameos are better. Uh, and I got to say, Morph, if you could turn into the Hulk, you don't need to turn into Colossus. <laughs> you don't need to turn into anyone else. Just turn into the Hulk every yeah. time. Why, why are you turning into magic? And, and and has her magic sword? I don't know how Morse powers work. Like, Mystique can look like you, but she can't copy your powers. Copy your powers. But clearly it looks like he can. And Rogue can s- steal your powers, but can't hold them for long. Yeah, I think... But Morph can just have... Have it. Yeah. Have the powers forever. I think I did see a thing where they said there was a scene of after he turned into Quicksilver, he was, like, exhausted afterwards because his he kind of, like, was able to copy his metabolism and able to run fast but then as soon as he turned back it all kind of caught up with him mm. and so it made him exhausted and it may be the same thing with like the hulk like hulk now he's carrying got gamma radiation or, yeah, <laughs> or carrying around that weight or punching those things it's like it really does hurt so it, it could be something like that mm-hmm. um and i think with rogue if she touches you for every second she touches you it's one minute Mm-hmm. That she can have your power, or maybe it's an hour, something like that. Uh, I would so, hope it's an hour because she did a uh, Jean's birth, and it she only touched that doctor for like three seconds. Yeah. So otherwise, just like we got three minutes to get this baby <laughs> out. You know? Yeah, that's very true. Um, now, I, like I said earlier, for people listening, I'm not. 
up as a pro on X Men as you. Like I've pretty much just seen the movies, mm-hmm. and I know some bits about like comic book lore, but not too deep. Um, Rogue in the movies was just I can steal your powers. Yeah. But Rogue in the show is so, I have flight and super strength yeah. from the get go. And also, I can steal power. No. Her mutant power is steal your powers. Right. And then Mystique was her stepmom and was raising her to be a bad guy. And said, uh, in in Rogue's first appearance, was just like... This is both comic and TV show accurate or just TV show? uh, um, No, this is comic accurate. Which I think they... they, Yeah, they absolutely do in the the cartoon as well. Uh, In in her first appearance in the comic, she was just like wrecking shop, just stealing because she could just touch you for a second and take you out. Mm. So she was just wrecking shop and Mystique was like, we're going to do this. We're going to take out all the big heroes and we're going to be the superpower. But she had to take out Captain Marvel and she told her, like, don't let go. And so she drained Captain Marvel of all of her powers. And that was the flight and the super strength. Mm -hmm. And so she kept that on permanently so she can't get rid of that power, and um, the the memories of Captain Marvel still stay in her head. And so she was a little bit crazy for a while. Professor X helped her compartmentalize that, and that Captain Marvel was just like in a coma. She pretty much killed her. So, so yeah. Okay, so she just so she has the ability to take powers permanently, but at the cost of like killing They're a person, killing a person, and absorbing all their memories, and it kind of can make her like have a split personality. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. so I can see why she wouldn't do that. Yeah, it's like, right. oh well, you know, sure we can kiss, but if we kiss for more than a few seconds, I can kill you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she she was a murderer. <laughs> gotcha. Because that'd be a, like a fun thing. I mean, not a fun thing, but like, oh well, I can take Logan's powers because no matter how much I hurt him. Like, he'll just regenerate. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, well, now I get all of Wolverine's memories. Oh, my God. A nightmare. Just decades <laughs> of, of horrible murder. Of trauma. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a super cut of the X-Men animated series of Rogue screaming. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen it. It's so fucking annoying. She has the loudest, screechiest voice. I'm going to take a second because I, I sent it to someone. I want to see if I could find it. But they're... There's a super cut of her just every time she, like, takes someone's power and starts screaming. And that actress, that voice actress, just really knows how to hit the highest peaks of, of your threshold. And, God, it's so fucking annoying. Who are you? I don't know what we we're talking about besides Rogue. Uh, I was asking you about yeah her power her power stuff, stuff. yeah. Um, but yeah, they do it in in the cartoon as well. She did take Captain Marvel's powers. She didn't get any sort of like cosmic shooty blasty sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Just the strength, durability, and flight. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna get two powers, it's Hell yeah. Two of the best ones yeah, I yeah, so. Absolutely. It's like not only can I hold my own against mm. uh pretty much anybody, I can also take anybody's power. Yeah, and then I can make you weaker and me stronger. So Well let me ask you this. So in this, you know, most of the time I think she's fighting um robots. Yeah. Um but she fights Bastion mm-hmm. in the final fight. You know, there's why don't the gloves come off and go like, yeah. all right, uh, as I'm punching you, I'm also going to like try and steal some of this ability. True. But also he's pretty crazy and it can just fuck with her head enough to have his mind in her mind. Oh, so that, you're saying like any amount of seconds she's getting, she's some getting memory. some of it. Uh, so it, it like, I thought it was like anything over like a minute. No, and like he, there, there have been times in the original show she would like take, touch Wolverine to heal and then she would start getting all growly just like him and getting pissed off and um, hmm. so she, she takes on their personality pretty quickly pretty so cool. that would that would probably make her go nuts fair enough yeah can do all right um, is there anything else you want to point out in the series like dislike uh, uh, notes uh, uh, things you want to see in the future things you don't want to see in the future uh, I want to talk about uh, how gay the show is 
it's kind of gay. Like Wolverine, and I'm sorry, uh, Charles and Magneto. You know that they, final episode. They should have just. They should have just kissed. They God. were getting closer and closer, and it's mostly Charles. Like he's he's a little more aggressive. Magneto kind of stays put. Like, well, maybe if I get a little closer, he's gonna gonna kiss. Yeah, but I think if Charles went for it, I think. Magneto might have been like kind of shocked, like this isn't what I want, and then mm-hmm. think about it for like half a second, and then Magneto would get the passion in there. Like Charles <laughs> is like, I've been wanting this for a long time, but yeah. Magneto would be like, No, no, I've wanted this for a long time, Charles. And he'd be like, You know, if you couldn't walk now, you wouldn't walk after. Ah, God, fuck that up. <laughs> if you couldn't walk before, you wouldn't be walking after me. Yeah, something like that. You came into my mind. I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Ugh. This is um, the uh, this is the art porn that we were writing yeah, currently. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just things like Gambit's little half shirt when they're playing basketball. Um, Very 80s, yeah, early uh, 90s crap. Morph. Uh, said, like I, I saw him turning into Gene and say, "I'm, I'm, I love you. Don't go away." Was was there for Wolverine to kind of keep him? Mm-hmm. But a lot of people are reading it as Morph actually professing his love to Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Could be. I just figured they were buddies. Um, but you know, yeah, I didn't read that way, but I could see that I could, could, that could yeah. be a fun thing. Yeah. And, and we, we said it before, but you know, if he did have a thing for Wolverine, he'd be like, I'll turn into G. Yeah. I, you know, do what you gotta do. I, I mean, I imagine Morph is, uh, sexually a- yeah. androgynous. Yeah. I mean, whatever, right? uh, Morph uses like they, them they, pronouns. They, yeah. And I, I just assume being able to transform into anyone, mm-hmm. man and, or woman, would give you an identity crisis. Sure. And especially since they don't have their normal features from before mm-hmm. and it's just the, the, the gray face. What what am I? Yeah. I can be anything. That's the kind Do of I have a default? I would be more interested in than yeah. Jubilee playing Motendo. <laughs> like, give yeah. me a really bummer of an episode where Morph is struggling with his identity and his sexuality. Mm-hmm. Like, where? what do I do with yeah. this? Like, I can be the most handsome man, the most beautiful woman, and it, it like, yeah. I don't And then know I can that... sleep with whoever I want. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I need to have a bunch of, like, Morph sex scenes or anything, but just, like, him going, <laughs> none of this, does any of this feel right, or does it feel like cheating? They're not loving me for me, like, but if I'm my normal... But I, we don't know what's going on down yeah. there, if there's anything. Yeah. So it's just like, but Can, I can't look like myself and feel love. I, yeah. just, I think you could do like a really awesome, fantastic, just just a morph alone episode. Yeah. Just going on vacation and trying out a bunch of things, you know? Yeah. And it would make sense for the X-Men because they were always kind of two things. Uh, and an analogy for hate and discrimination in the world for either racism or um, hom- homophobia and it was like a really horny soap opera. Yeah. Everyone was always hooking up and there's the love triangle with Gene, Scott and Wolverine. And then now Scott has a clone of his wife and a kid with that. And just Gambit, Gambit and Rogue, Rogue and Magneto. Rogue is man. Uh, yeah. Rogue, in the movies. Rogue dated Iceman because in his ice form, she could touch him. Mm-hmm. Oh, excuse me. She dated Colossus because in his metal form, she was able to touch him. Yeah, like everybody's just kind of hooking up. I know Psylocke and, and Cyclops hooked up one time. So it, it's it's all, they're all very horny. And when you live together and went to school together and you grew up together. I it know makes, it's related. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And then you, you add powers into it. Oh, it changes the whole dynamic of everything. Mm-hmm. And imagine like being Gene and you can <laughs> like, you don't have to tell Scott, oh, you're doing things the wrong way. You could just make his brain do it or you could physically pick him up and like use him as a a doll you know like (laughs) just adding powers adds a a whole different level to it um so yeah i wouldn't mind having a so turn it into our x-men porn segment Uh, there's gotta be or triple x-men you know uh, triple x-men's the the winner yeah yeah. uh it's gotta exist because during like the let's see the 2010 era there was a lot of uh like porn parody stuff a lot of batman porn parodies they they were just doing porn parodies of everyone even china the wrestler china was like she hulk in a porn parody at one time so there's got to be x-men ones i just haven't seen it saw a lot of batman ones but not not in the x-men ones we don't need to go down this (laughs) road right now 
Um, let's see. What do I want to see? I, I'm excited for Gambit to come back as death. I've always liked Apocalypse. I like the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse. Just in concept in general. I'm always yeah. attributing... If there's a group of four, I'm always figuring out who's what. They're either the Beatles or the uh, <laughs> or the Horsemen of Death. I, yeah, it's like, oh, who of the Beatles would be the four Horsemen? I'm like, oh, well, this person's definitely. Actually, I don't know enough of, of the Beatles to yeah. to assign any of them. But if there's any other group of four, I'm always doing that. Like the Ninja Turtles. Let's do it right now. The Ninja Turtles are the four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Who's so, who? Hang on. So it's death, famine, pestilence, pestilence and war. Uh, Raph is war. Raph is war, of course. Yep. Uh, Mikey would be pestilence because he's Kinda. like totally sick, bro. <laughs> uh, Got it. Okay. Donnie would be uh, famine because okay. he would. He's like, always like the skinniest one. And he would like feast for knowledge, not feast for food. Oh, okay, okay. And then Leah would be death, death because he holds the uh, the, the, swords, the the most powerful the, of all the, the swords blades. of uh, judgment over there. Boom! See, I feel like I, no one. I, 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 I do it all the time, it's, and it's either with the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse or the four elements. So now let's do it. The four elements: Ninja Turtles. Go. Well, it helps that they have cars. So Raph is fire. Um, Mikey is earth. Leo's water, and uh, Donatello's air. Donatello's because air. he's got the bow, and you yeah. can make it. Yeah. You can make the argument that Mikey's air because he's got the nunchucks sure. that spin. But I think Earth is kind of more stuff. He's, a, he's he the skateboarder. I, yeah, I see yeah. him being more Earth. Yeah. Um, Leo's yeah. very like fluid and like calm, like the waters, yeah. but they can also like do damage mm -hmm. and stuff. And Raph is just he's pure hot rage. all the time. He's yeah. pure rage. He's he's fire. See, yeah. it's great. I do it for everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited to see the four horsemen, and I wonder. Is he going to bring back people who died specifically on that island? Like, is it going to be Madeline Pryor or Multiple Man or Leech or, you know, any any of the Sebastian Shaw, whoever else died on there? They had, there's there's a ton of them. Or is he going to try to get Archangel back and you know, try to turn him? But if, if he brought Gambit back as death and then try to recruit Archangel, like, oh, I guess I'll be death again. Like, oh. Actually, that position is filled. <laughs> How do you feel about a pestilence? Like, what even is a pestilence? So what about you? What do you want to see? I know you don't want to see time travel stuff, which is clearly what they're doing. I know. Well, but hopefully, just... they could do like two episodes and then boom, back into our world. Yeah, I mean, We're... I, and I'm not necessarily inherently against time travel. You can do good storylines with it. It's just I feel like I've seen it so many times. I want something uh, different, or at least like surprise me with something with the time travel. Um, and I'm not familiar with x-men time travel storylines mm. and all that stuff it just seems like well we're doing time travel so we can bring back people that are dead mm -hmm. i don't want that yeah like do time travel but don't bring anybody yeah, back have consequences have consequences um and but what do i want to see uh or a character that maybe uh there's no characters that i would say that like i'd really really want to see all i care about is that they maintain the level of writing that they have in terms of like uh, lines of dialogue in this whole God, series has just so been well like written. poetic oh. and beautiful, like badass lines. Episode one, nothing. It's just like <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing all the, the hits so we can mm. get to the good stuff. It's the, to me, my X-Men yeah. and all that bullshit. Like, whatever. That's for the fans. But then everything after that is just like Magneto waxing poetic saying some deep awesome shit like villains saying some badass lines yeah his and best line is like well we don't like terrorists become becoming presidents well so many people allow their presidents to become terrorists beautiful great mm -hmm. line well, Every, I, everything like i said earlier everything nightcrawler said this season was just great yeah like he, tear inducing he before gambit was dead he had some good uh message about like sin and like it's mm -hmm. you know allow people there, to be in your life because they're the most forgiving yeah there is no love without sin because they're the ones who can forgive us yeah or whatever and she's like, amazing like that. i was like jesus Christ. storm and gene i really like their relationship in this they they, they i like that they call each other sister yeah they which in the original series they they weren't as close mm -hmm. like that and, and it's nice to have and when she, it, she, they say uh let them weather your mind let them mind your weather great awesome. yeah. so great <laughs> just every bit it's just something that can be on a a, a, a pretentious poster you know with a black <laughs> with border a yeah on. yeah like those motivational sort of things a whale tail coming up a in the alaska in the yeah any of those you put some of these x-men quotes on it that'd be a fun like 
uh, art exercise that you would see like on Instagram. Sure. Like you would see that jet in the sky that says like fly to your heights or whatever. Yeah. And you see like rogue flying by or like sure. storm calls. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, Beast like, hanging upside down, hang in there, um, you know. <laughs> Can, write it down, Steve. Write we, it down. Can we get yeah. can we get an artist friend on this? We we're gonna make a fucking fortune. Motivational X Men posters. X Men <laughs> posters. Do like a example. Uh, oh yeah, Beast on the Wire or something. Okay. Our one fan who <laughs> listen is just like, <laughs> I'm gonna make a fortune off of these guys. I'm sure these are even already done, you know, yeah, but, but to find existing ones with the phrase, the either like you find the existing phrase and attribute it to an X-Men character. Mm -hmm. And then you do the opposite. You find a great quote from this and try to put it on a pre-existing mm -hmm. motivational poster. So what do you put on that cat that's hanging there? That would be good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely the president terrorist line. <laughs> uh, Oh, the man we have it playing on in the backgrounds. The Madeline Pryor or the Goblin Queen episode. This episode is drawn so beautifully. Mm -hmm. All the weird mutation things that are like Akira monsters flowing through the house, and just her like doing a Sailor Moon reveal of her her super sexy black leather outfit. It's it's so good. I'm glad this episode's up and you pointed it out because I can't really see the TV that well. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I want to talk to you about uh, is uh, Mr. Sinister. Yeah. How did you feel about him this season? Because I don't know virtually anything about Mr. Sinister. Yeah. He's got a very cool name <laughs> and he's got a very interesting character design. One that I'm not sure would translate super well yeah, to the big yeah. screen. I think if he did exist. Those things on, coming off of his back are I a little much. I think if he did exist in... Uh, a live action form it would like he would keep his face mm -hmm. but he would have on like a suit a he'd suit. be like a businessman because he's look. he's done that too and then it would, they would like shoot him with an energy blast and the suit would tatter and then you would kind of get some of maybe those yeah bits and pieces or flapping. it would eventually you would reveal it in the final fight as mm -hmm. like this big reveal it's it may look like venom type ooze could be something. yeah uh I, i've always it liked out he's just a third he's tier got... villain in this yeah he's he's just being used by bastion and I, i've liked him because he you know he has the stuff with scott and gene but he also hired gambit to to form the team of the marauders mm -hmm. and the marauders were the ones that went into the sewer and like killed a bunch of the morlocks and there was always this big secret of like what's gambit's big horrifying secret and it eventually got revealed that he hired Sabretooth and a bunch of other fuckers to kill all these innocent mutants that he was like i didn't know what they were gonna do but it caused him and rogue to break up for a bit in, in the comics um so sinister always had some fun things but I never liked him nearly as much as your Magnetos or your Apocalypses because his powers are so vague. Mm -hmm. Like, I can just, like, do stuff, you know. Like a lot of uh, comic book characters, they just have powers, and it just suits whatever the... the It suits their needs at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, he's... He was going to be in one of the X-Men movies. Like, there was a, I a whole shift. Being talks of... Because at the end of... Was it Apocalypse? <sighs> they were stealing? It was Apocalypse. They, they like, close a briefcase, and yeah. it says the Essex Corp. Mm -hmm. And I think... Oh, that's right. He was going to be the villain in Logan, which makes sense, doing genetic modification sure. and stuff like that. But I can't remember why it fell through, and it was going to be John Hamm. I'm like, oh, John Hamm as Mr. Sinister would have been pretty great um i don't know if that would have made logan better or worse or anything but yeah it would have been interesting because the because it was just the, a the, doctor guy yeah the villains were humans yeah i mean they used they used mutants genetic uh clone of uh of Wolverine, Wolverine and, but and but the guys just, with robot arms and stuff they were just dudes they were just scientist dudes so. yeah yeah that that's not nearly as interesting yeah. Anyhow, um, all right. So my last question for you. So fucking hot. <laughs> the reveal where she's just like, bam. The, these artists are so horny. <laughs> Actually, I lied. So two questions. Uh, what is with the Goblin Queen thing? Like, 
So in the comics, did she actually have like an army of goblins? She makes a, like a deal with some sort of demon to have power over some like little goblin monsters. Mm. And that's why she becomes the goblin goblin queen. I thought like, I mean, I get you want to do an homage to the comics, but her coming yeah. out like, I'm the fucking goblin queen. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, why? It was like, the, <laughs> it was a. Uh, it was like um, James Spader in the office where he's like, I'm a fucking lizard king. Like, <laughs> it sounds cool, yeah. but like, what the fuck does that mean? Well, and, and at the end, when they make up for everything, she's like, call me Madeline Pryor. Like, where the fuck you get that name from? Is, do you see it in a newspaper or something? Like, why? I just would have liked someone to ask why. <laughs> but, but just like everything in the show, we don't have time for explanations. Uh, just keep fucking going. You know why. Read the comics. Yeah, read the comics. Whatever. And it doesn't matter. She's dead in a couple episodes anyway. So just yeah. fuck off. <laughs> What's your second thing? Uh, my second thing is, all right, so now that this show is a success, and we all know how Hollywood and studios work. It's like, all right, this worked. What? We're, we're bringing back either we're bringing back other shows or we're doing new shows in this world with mm-hmm. other characters. Do you want to see uh, the Avengers TV show with no. this? Do you want to do you want a Daredevil show? Do you no. want them to bring back uh, Spider Man ninety eight or whatever? Like, do you want of all of them? That's the only one that I would give a shit about. I actually did watch that show, or at least most of it, and I enjoyed it for the the most part. Uh, there's enough other Avenger shows already earth's mightiest heroes and Avengers assemble. There's already those Yeah. where with Spider-Man, we got a couple afterwards that I, I never watched that I hear is good. Um, like there's a CG one that was on MTV with oh, yeah. Neil Patrick Harris. Yep, yep, yep. Um, there's the one where he's like still in high school and he's, you know, still relatively young in it. I, a spectacular Spider-Man, probably. I think that's the one with uh, where like Donald Glover guest stars as Miles Morales. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah. So I didn't watch that. So it also feels like, eh, well, do we need to go back to this Spider-Man show when, like, yeah, it ended on a cliffhanger, but we got other Spider-Man things. I would like them to kind of just maybe look at some of the other characters that have never gotten a chance. I I wouldn't mind staying in the X-Men universe. Um, Generation X came pretty close mm. after this, and now that uh, uh, I was going to call her Emma Stone, uh, Emma Frost, mm. uh, she runs Generation X with Banshee, but Banshee died on <laughs> Genosha. So I, I think that would be fun if maybe it was her and Jubilee, you mm. know, and like you, you could age her up or whatever, or find someone else for it. I would like a Generation X show. All right. Uh, I know it's not Marvel. It's a, a Dark Horse thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we kind of hinted at it earlier. I think this would be a perfect time to bring back uh, like 90s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay. And you could fit them in this world because they are mutants. Yeah, not, sure. Yeah. In a way, they're yeah. different kind of mutants. They're uh, genetically made mutants versus born mutants. Yeah. Um, but... That can, that can be an alternate reality, but I'd like to see. I don't want them to look like the '90s because they were too too cartoony. too soft. Yeah. Um. But I want it to be like in that time period in that world. Okay. But just have like the more like. Do you know the 2000s look? Yeah. Uh. Because I think the, that show. I watched a bit of that show, and that show was actually that, pretty that's solid. considered like one of the like cool ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you have like kind of those versions of turtles okay. that set it in. Uh. The 90s era time, you know, give them the big yellow van um, and like make them fight Bebop and Rocksteady with their like very, uh, I don't know why they thought all gangs kind of like looked uh, c- c- cyberpunk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And everyone, all the gang members have like cut off tees and stuff mm. or whatever. Um, but I'd like to see sort of a reboot of Ninja Turtles in that in that sort of sense. Couple things. There's never not been a Ninja Turtles show. So you have your pick of the litter of any type. Two, yes, they are technically part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe because the ooze is the same stuff that blinded Daredevil. Sure. But, but that was more like we it's stole a, all of our it's ideas a, from It's Daredevil. a wink, wink. Yeah, I get it. But also it's owned by like WB and they're part of DC. Mm-hmm. So if it was going to be anything because there's the TMNT Batman movies. I did read those comics. That would be more likely than, than X-Men. And I understand. So, I, yeah. I get it. Um, 
So we would have to go with a diff- different I, mutants, either the sewer sharks or the biker mice from Mars meet the X-Men. Let me just say this. And I know this we're supposed to be talking about X-Men. Um, I started reading the the newer versions of the um, I think it's the IBM comics mm-hmm. uh, uh, that they've been doing with Ninja Turtles. And at least from what up to what I read to it's like great. And yeah. it's like all these like homages to old stuff. And um, obviously, but it's in that weird cyberpunk world, right? Uh, it, it kind of, well, no. What do you mean? It, it's not in the Last Ronin universe? I mean, it could be, but the Last Ronin is like 60 years in the future. Oh, okay, okay. Where it's like super futuristic. This is like modern day times. But the regular Ninja Turtles aren't there, right? This is the new generation? No, no, no. Oh, this is? I'm just talking oh. like, so I think it started back in like 2012 or something. Like that. I could mm-hmm. be getting this all wrong. Um but it's basically they just start they kind of started over again and uh, just they're introducing like every major villain that you okay just know, updating it for a new just generation updating for a modern, and I think okay. it's still going now okay um, but it's kind of like coming out in books like The Walking Dead okay um, where okay. like each uh, book that comes out is like a different character anyway the point is there's some really great stuff going on in there mm. and I think you can just take those storylines and put it in animation form, and that's what I'd like to see. Okay. Um, because I think right now the turtles are just doing like, oh, well, we'll do a fun crossover thing. And like Last Ronin is very popular, so I know they're jumping at the Last Ronin game, and I'm sure there's going to be a and Last a movie. Ronin movie. Yep. But like, you can do a very... Do like a, a an adult Ninja Turtles thing. Because I know Ninja Turtles are just kind of silly in general, mm-hmm. and they've always sort of been targeted towards kids. Because they're kids themselves. They're teenagers. They're teenagers. But in a lot of sense, some of the X-Men are supposed to be teenagers. Sure, yeah. So I want to see, make this X-Men show, but change it, fill it with Ninja Turtles. Okay. And <laughs> have them do, like, hard-hitting stories about, like, you know, being, being freaks in their world. Yeah. But, like, fighting for humans. And it, it's essentially the same shit. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then you get some really cool villains in there and that we know and love. And there, you have the, all the sci-fi elements that the X-Men do. There's... It's yeah. a bit, it's a deep well you can mine. Absolutely. And lots of new stories that are coming out. So bring the turtles back in that way. I, I thought you were talking about, because, like, in isn't there a new set of turtles? There's a new set, of, and I'd like to see that, too. Yeah. Um, but get, they need some time to build some stories. Yeah. Have have the new series come out with the Ninja Turtles. That is a huge hit, like X-Men. They go, okay, this is working. Either have a second show where uh, it's them, or, like, you do the last run. Because th- they're the continuation of the last run. Yeah. Um, so you do a, you or you finish the Ninja Turtle series and with the last run and jump into uh, sure. the new series. Yeah. But I imagine what they're going to do is since all this last run stuff is coming out, do last run and then the new series. Yeah. So it's like, Oh, new Ninja Turtle show, but we're not doing Raph and Leah. We're mm-hmm. doing whatever their names are. I forget. They're all like different words for like one, right? Yeah. There. Oh yeah. There's like Uno, Uno and, uh, One or something. (laughs) I just just said one weird. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah, they're just one, but it's all mixed around. Owen. Neo. Neo, Owen, Oni. (laughs) Well, Oni is just one. Uh, But yeah, but you got to say what. There's an accent mark. Eon. Eon. Yeah. Cool. All right. Anything else? That was like an hour of X Men talk. Yeah, I mean. I, I wish I knew more about X Men. <laughs> you know, no, no mystique. No mystique. Uh, yeah, the you know the news reporter that was held captive by Bastion. Mm-hmm. A lot of people thought she was going to end up being Mystique, mm. and and like I could see it, but there was no reason for it to happen. So yeah, no mystique, no Iceman, no Colossus, no, no Shadow Cat, no Shadow Cat, yeah, no Pyro Blob. There's there's a deep well of characters. Well, I mean, I, actually, I think Blob is there helping Echinosha or something. I don't remember. Yeah. Nah. You know better than I do. Yeah. All right. Well, next week. It's Furiosa time. It's Furiosa. Me and my roommate, we're going to go up to uh, a local IMAX and mm-hmm. see it. Since since we have the pass, we get a free upgrade. So we're going to go do that. I don't think we're going to do the four, four bo- 40 box where it's moving around and spraying water in your face, which... Not a lot of water in these movies, so maybe they're just chucking handfuls of dirt in your face the dirt, whole time. Or gasoline. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Furious. Uh, excited for that. I've heard nothing but good things. I'm trying to stay away. Yeah, I'm not listening to any any uh, reviews, but I'm just seeing little things of superb, a masterpiece, better than the last one. It's, which it's not going to be better than. Don't. You can't say that. 
Um, but you know how those those writers sure. are. Uh, I'm hopefully optimistic, but I'm trying to temper my expectations too. Yeah. Um, but just based on trailer, I was like, yep, that looks like everything I liked about the first yeah. one. Uh, and uh, it's one of my more anticipated movies of the year. Hell yeah. I don't think I have many left, uh, if any. Um, so, Craven yeah. Craven the Hunter. Yep. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, well, speaking of I Craven. I would love for it to be worse than Madame Webb, just so I know that there is something that, even, yeah, how even you... deeper. Uh, but I can't imagine. Did you, did you watch Nando's that. video on Madame Webb? I believe so. It's, it's like the movie that he figures out and pieces together yeah. from stuff. God, that would have been so much more fun. Would have been really cool. Yeah. yeah that, like, <laughs> I think he started that review kind of going like, look, I don't want to shit on anyone. So this isn't going to be like a rip apart video because there's a million videos like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. But it, it, the movie earned those videos. <laughs> yeah, like, they're really not did. wrong. I appreciate what you're trying to do, mm-hmm. uh, but it's one of the worst things I've ever seen. Yeah. But it's ever like, seen. I don't need to ever watch Venom or Venom. Let there be carnage ever again. Mm-hmm. I'd watch Madame Web again. I would. That's absurd. It's so stupid. It's so silly. Like, you have fun watching how bad it is. Where Venom and Carnage are bad, but they're not, like... The, like, the weirdest thing is him jumping in that fish tank and eating those lobsters. I'm like, well, that's a weird scene. But there's really nothing else in those movies that make you want to revisit it. Unless you're one of those monster fuckers who just loves Venom. Uh, but Madam Web, it's scene after scene of terrible, terrible shit. I mean, I have no doubt that there could be, like, a cult thing after this. Very much... Uh... You know, Mystery Science Theater 3000 yeah. or, you know, the, the Santa Claus versus the Martian thing. Like mm-hmm. people 20 years from now are like, let me tell you about one of the worst things. Yeah. Ever. So I remember watching this in theaters and mm-hmm. how bad it was. So I could see there being an exercise in that. Yeah. Um, but I also think like there's movies from our childhood that we saw where we're like, we watch it now like, oh, why did I like this? This is yeah. definitely bad. But sure. it, is, it does make you feel good to go back and like, oh, this is kind of funny that I like this yeah. or whatever. Or they don't make movies like this anymore. I don't know if Madame Webb can ever be that kind Maybe. of movie for me because yeah. I'll just go, I am unangry that we're watching this right now. But good news, uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who helmed the Spider-Verse movies, mm-hmm. they are in charge of Sony's like Spider-Man universe side. Like They're the James Gunn of the Sony Pictures universe. I'm like, oh, so maybe we'll get someone who knows what the fuck they're doing and can like maybe write the ship. So we'll have to see. I kind of feel like the well is very, very dry. And like, what else are you going to do? You're not going to make a but, rhino movie, yeah, right? They, they made their, they essentially made their Spider-Man movies with the, uh, sure. Miles Morales stuff. Yeah. But now they can say, Hey, what else are we doing? Do you want to do live action miles? Tell a different version of that story with no spider verse stuff. Okay. Let's work it into the Sony universe. And now it's up to you to figure that out. And they may go, okay, Craven, we're done. Venom 3, we're done. That's the Sony, what is it called? The Sony Pictures Universal Marvel Movies. Uh, and then they do the the Lord and Miller Sony Pictures. I think that's, you have to do it that way. Yeah. There, you you don't, no, don't try to work Jared Leto in. No one no gives a shit. This. Yeah. There's, there's no you want You want to bring Andrew Garfield back? Well, you should have done that already. But if you want to, sure. I think that's the only thing people would accept. Anything else is, we don't need Madam Web. We don't need this Venom. We don't need this Craven. Let's start If I have never been in a movie before, or if I'm Andrew Garfield, I did one successful Spider-Man movie, and they're like, hey, everyone wants you to come back, but you're going to be in a movie where you fight Morbius and uh, Man Spider, or whatever the guy's Mm -hmm. name was from Madam Web. Did he have a villain name? I don't even remember. He didn't have like a a super villain name, but his name was... Who fucking cares? (laughs) You fight Craven, that guy... Uh, Morbius, and you know, bringing all these uh, Venom that he's mm-hmm. coming into, it's like it's the worst sinister thing. I, I, ever. I would, I would take the money if and I'm like just trying to it. be an actor. If I'm Andrew Garfield now, and they offered me a hundred and fifty million dollars to do yeah. ten minutes in this fucking thing, I'd be like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, like you had your chance. Yeah, I'm rich enough and famous enough that I don't. I would never touch this fucking franchise. Yep. Not for all the money in the world. It's yeah. absurd. Yeah. All right. Well, next week, Furiosa. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, we are at WRPLpodcast at gmail.com. We're on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and threads. 
As always, I'm Ben. And I'm Andrew Garfield. <laughs> and keep consuming. You wish. <laughs>